Hello, I'm Conrad Swift, and welcome to the Cardano Convo podcast, a podcast that gives a glimpse into the Cardano ecosystem. The Cardano Convo provides an easy to digest explanation of the projects that are being built, thoughts, and what's going on within the Cardano community. Today, I'll be speaking with Jeff, the co founder of Ada Pulse. Without further ado, let's get to the interview. Hello, Jeff. It's nice to have you on the show, and thank you for taking the time to talk with us today and answer a few questions about the work you've been doing with Ada Pulse. I appreciate the invite. So there are a couple of questions I always ask. To begin, could you tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself, your background, and what drew you into crypto in general? Sure, yeah. I'm Jeff from Swag State Pool, uh, one of the co-founders of Ada Pulse. Um, I've been IT for about 12 to 13 years now. Um, I had a friend uh, introduce me to Bitcoin back in 2015. He used to play poker with it and it just really didn't pique my interest at the time. So I was just kind of like, I wasn't having it for whatever reason in life, of course. And then kind of around late 27, when the boom started happening again, I look, you know, things started getting crazy. And then I remember my friend was talking about Bitcoin. So I looked into it, started gambling losing money. And then I kind of stumbled upon, uh, upon the, you know, the infamous Charles whiteboard video and then kind of just been in the community ever since then. Oh yeah. It's, that's been kind of a bringing end point for a lot of people. I've done many interviews and many people say that whiteboard video is what got them on board with Cardano. It's, it's truly remarkable. Even if you see it for the first time, you will not understand a lot of what's going on because at a high level, you just won't understand it. But you understand that this individual is passionate and there are some critical things, thoughts and ideas that he's like pontificating, trying to under, trying to get people to understand. And it just draws you in to, OK, well, I didn't understand that. Let me redo. Let me do a little more research, re- more research and figure out what he's talking about. And down the rabbit hole you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. And talking about research, could you give our audience an explanation of what Ada Pulse is? Sure. Uh, Adipulse is a media outlet that's built uh, by the Cardano community to focus on uh, projects within the ecosystem, whether it be catalyst proposals or news, or now we're starting segments where we have opinion pieces, as well as just projects doing, um, you know, up- updates with projects, whether it be partnerships or latest, uh, you know, minimal viable products coming out as we gear up for uh, the, the launch of smart contracts, any type of information that's being disseminated in the Cardano community that we think is of value is something we'll write about. So where did the inspiration for AdaPulse.io come from? Did you see a void that needed to be filled in the Cardano community or... Yeah, so Voltaire is like actually my favorite era. So I just kind of gravitated to this idea of, you know, Project Catalyst when it first came out. And so I had been following that closely since the beginning or since around the launch of Shelley when they had the, the initial blog post of everything kind of unraveling of how we're going to start moving into Voltaire. And so I had been on idea scale since the very beginning. And to be honest, it's just not user friendly. It's, it's just not. And um, so I was on there and I saw this essentially proposal that wasn't gaining a lot of traction. And so I started reaching out to a couple of uh, influencers in uh, our ecosystem and, you know, they had other engagements or they just maybe possibly didn't seem it, deem it a value. And so I was like, hey, there is a gap here of bringing individuals that don't have the tech savviness or the, you know, want to sift through all this information on idea scale and to understand what is actually being proposed in a lot of these proposals. And so this is pretty much where the idea of Adipulse came from, where we would take these somewhat clunky proposals and try to and turn them into easily digestible articles for the masses. Because I, I know I gain value from that. A lot of the, the, the individuals, the, uh, the writers right now are doing great work on our site and they take these article, these proposals and make them uh, pretty amazing articles at the end of the day. Oh, and I also agree with the Cardano dot idea scale. It's, it is clunky. The years, it's not very user friendly because I, I've had people say, check out this 
proposal. And so I clicked the link and this was a while back, but then you have to be able to log into idea scale to be able to view the proposal. So, and on top of that, once you're reading through it, sometimes it's not formatted. Well, sometimes because of the character restrictions, it's not very, like it's not well elaborated upon. So I actually found Ada Pulse.io a while back, and I believe it was talked about in a Cardano 360 as well. Mm -hmm. So I was able to check that out and it made it, as you said, it was so much easier to digest. It was beyond like it was significantly better than trying to use the user interface. And especially with idea scale and project catalyst growing, I'm sure you guys have got tons that are probably going to be coming out. Absolutely, we do. And, uh, you know, I don't want to rag on idea scale too much because it's actually gotten significantly better. Yeah. However, there's still, like you said, a lot of people are still turned off to the fact that you have to give a email address to log in. And that's just that's that's a you know, that's a non starter for a lot of people in this space. Right. Oh, yes. So, but I mean, it's it's, it's early days and, um, you know, uh, Catalyst and idea scale are doing them phenomenal things. And we're just trying to figure out how we can, you know, support the community at the end of the day. Oh yeah. No, we, we understand that here as well. Um, I did want to ask, I know you're a co-founder and I know that you're not the only one behind Ada Pulse. We invited Jen Zod on, but he was a bit shy. Could you tell us a little bit about Ada Pulse's other co-founder? Yeah, Jin Zod is a character and an amazing partner. A partner in uh, on Ada Pulse. Uh, he's actually one of the true OGs of the community. The very like you go through and research the Reddit posts, early days. He's the only one asking questions. You know, piquing people's interest, trying to spark a conversation about you know, get people to to you know, thought provoking ideas and thoughts. Um, and he's also the primary dev for the site as well. So he does a lot. He just, you know, he's one of those individuals that um, that has a high level of respect and appreciation for uh, anonymity. And I respect that. So um, but yeah, he, he's a, he's a cool dude. And um, yeah, man, uh, hopefully one of, the, one of these days you guys can, you guys can get him on here. Oh, yeah, we'd love that. And I I do respect the anonymity because that's kind of one of the cornerstones of cryptocurrency is that possibility. Um, I did have another question about Ada Pulse, though. There are quite a few crypto news outlets out there, but what makes Ada Pulse unique? Yeah, um, I think I kind of alluded to it. The fact that it's more of a community media outlet, like the, I've never met in person any of these people. And, you know, they're all from the community. We outsourced it from the community. Um, grassroots, we really reached out to individuals and said, hey, you know, if you are passionate about the Cardano community, you want to see it flourish and grow, um, why don't you come help us and write about things that could, you know, informate and disseminate information that people find valuable. And I think that right there showed a lot of people that, you know, that we could come together and, and do something collectively and build something to support the, uh, to support the community in a way that, Maybe you're not as technical savvy. Maybe you can't start up a state pool. Maybe you can't run it. You don't have the technical uh, know-how to, you know, build an application or smart contracts or interact with Cardano node, but you know how to write well. You know how to, you know, take information and, like I said, convert it into a just digestible medium for individuals to learn. And there, we just got an overwhelming support from the community and individuals, and we still get people to this day that we interview on a weekly basis that said they want to write or somehow contribute to Ada Pulse. And it's just, it's overwhelming and we, we love it. And, you know, we'll continue to grow in that matter. And we're still a pretty young outlet at the end of the day. So um, we're still trying to figure out ways we can better, better provide more value to the community um, and, and different aspects. I'm glad you guys are providing that opportunity because I have noticed that for a lot of people, it can be really hard to contribute because if you don't have computational capabilities, like if you can't program very well or you can't program at all, such as myself, or if you're wanting to run a stake pool, but that's quite the responsibility and technical know-how and security, and you're not well-versed in that, you might have a different skill set that could contribute. And you guys are offering that outlet for those individuals. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there are. There's so many people in this community that, you know, have amazing talents, you know, from um, 
individuals that are doing the, uh, the graphics to our website to individuals that are also just in the background doing research and providing a, a you know depth of information for our writers to be able to produce these articles it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool cool to see at the end of the day all of it come together and build these products and that people appreciate so you were talking a little bit about development of the site as well as building applications on that note do you have any plans to make a Ada Pulse mobile application, something similar to other news or outlet applications that allow easy access on the phone? We do. Uh, we've been thinking about it for a little bit now, and me and Jinza just need to figure out the best way, the best strategy to move forward on how we want to implement um, and fund for the most part, whether we want to keep it in-house or outsource it. We're still open to ideas and trying to figure out what's the best strategy for uh, Adapulse. But yes, uh, definitely stay tuned and, and keep your eye out for the Adapulse mobile app. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it because that would be one I would have the notifications coming through because, again, the articles you guys make are just so nice, like a four minute read to get a full in-depth understanding of a project or a proposal is in my like in my eyes. You only have so much time in the day, and that's right. valuable use of that time. Appreciate that. So what would be the biggest challenge that Ada Pulse has faced? I know I'd imagine at the beginning it could be hard to get started up. It could be difficult to find writers. Um, all of the above, to be honest. Like I said, we're still fairly, fairly new. We launched back in March, so we don't want to grow too fast. And... Um, you know, and not be able to support uh, something that we, we initially take on or, you know, just not keep it up because this also this, uh, you know, this market and this ecosystem, this industry just is so fast paced. Right. Oh, yeah. So we're, we're just trying to make sure that we're putting, you know, um, one foot in front of the other and trying to um, take on as much as we can and, and be able to give quality as opposed to quantity. You know, um, we don't want to be just shooting out articles for the sake of shooting out articles. You know, the writers over there, they take, you know, time and effort and put a lot of quality into, into these articles. And, you know, our, our readers, our viewers have shown a deep level of appreciation of, of the, you know, the depth of, of, like you said, the, you know, the articles. So we want to keep that intact. Um, and so I think that's kind of the hardest cha challenge, keeping that that balance of making sure that, you know, we're continuously growing, but still remaining and keeping that level of quality in, in, in our articles and just any pieces that are that, are, that come across Adapulse. Oh, of course. And we when we've talked with many projects, they talk about this quality versus quantity. And of course, um, whether you're a launch pad, whether you're producing articles, you you would want people when, as I said, when they spend their time for it to mean something, for it to be valuable, what you're producing. So, no, I appreciate the quality over quantity. How did you recruit your writers for the news articles? Are they permanent team members or do you accept other contributors as well? Yeah. So I, I think the, the first initial batch of writers was, like I said, just from Twitter. I literally just put a post out on Twitter and just to read the room and see what, what people say. And I got an overwhelming uh, amount of people, an influx of people reach out to me and said, hey, yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested. So we started there. And then I also outsourced from a couple other sites where I found more people with that had actually, you know, had had resumes. And um, we were able to start doing the interview process like that. But at the end of the day, it like I said, we have so many people still reaching out that it we're to the point if you feel you can provide some quality or some uh, some value, hit hit our email, hit us in the contacts, contact us, and, and we'll start there. Um, yeah, we have no, there are no requirements for for you to write for us. We just want to say, okay, can you write? Do you have anything? Do not. Okay, cool. Let's. How about we do a test run and we'll go from there. As far as uh, permanent team members, people come and go. People, you know, 
do other projects. There are no, you know, we don't say, hey, this is, you know, you're with Ada Pulse, you got to write with us, or you can't contribute any, any other ways. Like I said, this is a community led project. And so at the end of the day, that's where I want to keep it. Regardless if who's funding it, I want it to always remain to be a community led project because at the end of the day, I think it value, it brings value to the entire ecosystem writ large, regardless if whoever is funding the project at the end of the day. Oh, and I can speak from experience. We here actually worked with Ada Pulse for a little while providing audio for like audio readings. And Jeff is just a very easy to approach guy. He'll work with you. If there's something you can help with, I'm sure he'll be there willing to see what you got and see how you can contribute. Of course, as he said, it's, it is a very community led project and it's something that if you're wanting to contribute and you have something to contribute, I, I imagine you'd be up for that. Absolutely. Like I said, shoot us an email uh, on the contact page and, and we'll go from there. So another question is where do you see Ada Pulse going in the next year or two as the Cardano ecosystem grows? I would like for it to be one of the premier outlets in Cardano. Um, right now, I don't see too many like primarily focused on our community. You know, you got the other big ones like um, Coin Telegraph and what's the other one? I can't remember. Coin Desk. Coin Desk. Thank you. I mean, they cover the entire industry, but you know, we get the scraps at the end of the day. When, when e- even in third, top in the top three, we still are. I mean, I guess now we're start. We're, I guess around the summertime, the 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 articles start to pick up, uh, pick up. But yeah, I still don't see a significant amount of you know people just writing on Cardano specifically. So in two years, we would like to be at least in the top three, uh, you know, outlets that individuals are trying to consume Cardano information um, at the end of the day. So that would be nice. Oh, that's extraordinarily ambitious, and I do wish you the best on that. I'm, with the way you guys are going, I have no doubt you'll achieve that. Yeah, so, well, um, I mean, it, it it depends, but I think we are on a good trajectory to uh, to be in at least in position to 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 do something like that. So now that we've gotten some of those questions out of the way, I have a few more fun questions so our viewers can get to know you a bit better, <laughs> and they are still with regard to Ada Pulse. Um, the first one is. What has been your favorite Project Catalyst proposal? Ooh, my favorite Project Catalyst proposal. I got to say right now, any proposal that is talking about a wallet is a win. Like wallets are severely needed right now in our ecosystem. And that's not a slight at Daedalus or Yoroi. I mean, I'm a Daedalus fan through and through. I've been with Daedalus since the rough days of day list. same oh the 20 minute up to get it all going yeah i remember coming home from work i'd open that up i'd go and make myself some food and come back and about <laughs> yeah. then it might be just about ready yeah i remember right. exactly so i i still use deadlist to this day so i'm i i'm gonna it's gonna be a i don't know i don't know if i'll ever give up give up on deadlist that's that's my first love um but Still, I think there is a heavy demand for lightweight wallets, you know, MetaMask. MetaMask is king in Ethereum, and we don't have a MetaMask. We have, I mean, we have, we have wallets that are, have potential to become something like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and if we're naming a few, I, we just produced a couple of articles on NAMI wallet. Shout out to Barry. And the, uh, I think it's uh, CC Wallet. We just produced an article on the CC Wallet uh, today, actually. So if you haven't checked those out, those are two proposals that are in Fund 6 right now looking for um, some very needed funding so we can push our, our wallets to the next phase to, you know, to, to garner more users and, that, and build that user experience within our ecosystem that I think is the, is the one thing. If we, if we were talking about any weakness, I think, in our ecosystem, it's our wallets, man. It's, that's where it is to me. Oh, yeah. I've seen you tweet a couple of times about, for example, some problems you've run into with other wallets. And I agree. We need to have, we need to have multiple utilities, multiple wallets to fit what you need. If you're a programmer having a wallet that fits your needs. If you're a lay user, like who was a no coiner like two weeks ago and you need 
just something that's very easy to use, have something like that. I think that having more wallets is better. And you were talking about CC wallet. You were talking about NAMI wallet. We're actually intending on interviewing um, somebody who's making a wallet called Game Changer Wallet. Okay. We, we see how having these options, these opportunities for different wallets to, because we want an open marketplace of ideas and wallets. So mm -hmm. what we're aiming for is if this wallet can make it easier, make it faster, make it more user friendly, then other wallets need to look, we'll look at that and go, we need to probably do something like go down that route a little bit too. And that'll help everyone out because I won't point fingers, but I've seen issues some people have had with at the end of epochs with the wallet, not certain wallets, not functioning. And you don't want that. You know, I would say it, it's your because your came, but they came out yesterday. I will say this: they, they addressed it yesterday. Right. Which is mm -hmm. good. And I still, I, I, and I, I sent them a message and I was like, look, we're counting on you guys to be the mobile wallet because NAMI wallet and CC wallet are good wallets, but they're web wallets. They're not mobile apps. Yeah. Right now we need a mobile app, you know, and Yeroi is that. So we need, we're counting on Yeroi and others in the future to have this mobile capability because that's where users want. They, they want that right now. They want to be able to, uh, you know, keep their, uh, their funds on their phone. Regardless of what you and I say, or it, that's just what it is right now. If you if you can link it up to a ledger, even better. But they want to at least have access to some funds on a mobile application. And so when I when people ask me, well, where's the mobile app? I have to point them to you because you know, that's the only one in, in the system. And so hopefully we can build. And I'm starting to see. Um, I think CC Wallet also saw so when I, I spoke to them briefly through Twitter. They said I asked them. I was like, hey, what about a mobile? What about a mobile app? And they're like, yep, it's coming. So there's definitely some competition. Shout out to anybody that is building a, wa a wallet. Consider also, if you're not, an app because the demand is, is ridiculous. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, yeah. And whenever I explain to somebody how to do staking on Cardano, how to use Cardano, how to make a wallet, immediately I don't go, you're going to have to download this onto your browser or They'll just be like, they have their phone right there with them. Like we're at a coffee shop talking about this or wherever mm -hmm. we are. It's easier to be able to go, for example, download your exchange of choice by which you can buy ADA or Cardano. And also on the same device, download the wallet. It That's by far the easiest. And I'd have to say probably 9.5 times out of 10. Uh, that's how I'm explaining how to delegate. So if you want your wallet, use mobile app. Like. Yep. That is going to get you a lot of users compared to if you don't have one. Easily. Easily. Lastly, which non-project catalyst article that has been published on Ada Pulse is your favorite? That's a good one. I gotta think about it. Uh we brought um Liber Lion on, I wanna say, I wanna say maybe a month, six weeks ago from now. And he's just been contributing these pieces like these literally thought-provoking pieces and there was one on regulation that he that he pushed out i want to say maybe a couple weeks ago it was really good if you haven't checked into it about upcoming regulations um you know just the depth and knowledge in that piece and the research that went into that piece is is really good so definitely go to ada polls check out and check out that article on upcoming regulations um if, if you haven't, and it's not to, it's not to like, um, you know, FUD or, you know, scare anybody into anything. It's just reality, you know, and there's going to come regulation and that's just what it is. We, you know, in some aspects we need regulation is some clarity. So he, he, he puts it in a very clear and concise manner. And um, yeah, it was, it was one of the good, one of the better pieces that didn't actually touch on any type of catalyst proposal that I, that I really thought brought a lot of value to the website. Oh, wow. I haven't read that, but I'm definitely going to have to check that out. And we'll have the link down below to that article as well. Um, this has been super informative and I really appreciate you taking the time to chat today. Before we go, how can listeners get involved with what you're doing or how can people best support you and your team? Yeah. So uh, like I said, I run a stake pool, swag stake pool, as well as my uh, co-founder, Jen Zod. He runs the Zod pool. And the best way you guys can contribute and support us 
is through our stake pools. If you haven't found a stake pool yet that you're staking with, check out Swag or Zod. And if you stake with those two stake pools, you're automatically supporting Ada Pulse. Um, and if you haven't yet, please, please, please do check out adapulse.io. Like I said, it's a, it's a website built by the community that is just trying to um, take particularly technical information from Catalyst proposals and turn them into digestible uh, articles, as well as just anything uh, newsworthy within uh, the Cardano ecosystem. So that's kind of our mission. Thank you for coming on once again. We have all the links down below. We'll have the links down below us as well. So again, thank you so much for coming on, Jeff. I appreciate you having me. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Cardano Convo podcast. If you want an easy way to help us out, then make sure to share this podcast. That way we can grow and create a better podcast for you guys. Also leave us a five-star review. And if you had feedback on today's episode, tweet us at Cardano Convo. Send your emails to cardanoconvo at gmail.com or join the Cardano Convo Discord server and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Also make sure to check out our new podcast website on crypto-loops.com. Now we'd like to take some time to thank our sponsors. First are our patrons over on the Cardano Convo Patreon page. Their direct contributions help to make this podcast possible. By becoming a patron, you gain amazing benefits such as access to polls to help decide the content of upcoming episodes, early access to videos, roles and benefits within the Discord server, and so much more. Our second sponsor is Loops Pool. If you want to help out the podcast and are looking for a Cardano stake pool to delegate your ADA to, then think about delegating with Loops Pool. That's Loops, L-O-O-P-S. Again, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Cardano Convo.